So here are the steps to perform the PCA. What we will do is first center all our XIs around origin so that our math becomes much easier down the ground. So we'll center all our data points around origin. So we need to scale all our data points such that their mean is zero. Second step to do PCA, as we saw, we'll calculate the covariance matrix. And this covariance matrix is nothing but you take XI and you multiply it by the transpose of XI. And you average it for all divided by the number of points that you have. That will give you the covariance matrix. And third, we already saw was given this covariance matrix, we want to calculate the Egan vectors and the Egan values of C so that the Egan vectors will give us the direction where we have the maximum variance. What we do is we take all these Egan vectors and arrange them in a matrix like this one. And we arrange them with increasing order of their Egan values. So if Lambda one was the Egan value corresponding to V one. We'll have this as first, then V two, V three, and so on. So we create this matrix V such that this Egan vectors are in ascending order or descending order of their corresponding Egan values. Then what we will do is the whole point of this exercise was to reduce dimensions, right? Over here, this will be an M by M matrix where if M, if we have M dimensions, there will be an M square matrix, which is too high. We don't want that. We don't want those many dimensions. What we could do is actually take just a subset of all the vectors that we have. And the reason why we could do this is this Egan values, which these vectors correspond to, they tell us, they give us a sense of how much variation that Egan vector captures. So over here, the amount of variation that your reduced subset will retain will be given by, so let's say we are just taking two vectors over here, corresponding to lambda one and lambda two. The amount of variations or the amount of variations that we are retaining is given by lambda one plus lambda two divided by all the lambdas. Okay, so this will be this will give us amount of variation that we are retaining in this data. So if you plot a chart, it would be something like this one. Over here, you have k number of components. You have principal component one, two, three, and so on. And you will see a graph like this. So the percentage of variation that I'm capturing in first few Egan values will be a lot higher. After a point, it just, you now we are just getting incrementally better increase in the variance. Initially, first few components, it will increase exponentially. So that's the reason I can just take two components and still get a better or a close enough representation of my data. The next thing that we want to do is we want to project this input data that we have Remember the whole point was to get a compressed representation of our data points, right? So the whole point was to project our data set on to something else so that we can get a compressed representation. So what we will do is we'll create this new vector X transformed, which is also the compressed representation of X such that we take this VR, this reduced sub a vector subspace that we got over here. So this is the VR and we just transpose it and now apply to X. So this is nothing but projection of this points onto vector VR. Okay. So we got this X transformed or this is the PCA representation in PCA subspace or in the PCA world, we are saying that this XI in PCA form is nothing but this VR matrix that we got from here, transpose it and multiply that with each X. Okay, simple. Let's say if you have to recover this information, let's say if you have to go back from X transformed 
to x again how do you how would you do that if you take multiply both sides of this equation over here with vr what you will end up seeing is this vr times vr transpose is a unit matrix because that's a property of our eigen vector because this is one this will be equal to x itself right so this part will become one we still have x so what we are saying is even with this transform space if you multiply the transformed version of your vector with vr itself you will end up having the original x that is we can recover x this slide is just another version another way to represent this graph over here right so sometimes you see people you know selecting m or how many principal components to keep by looking at this chart which is the cumulative sum of all the variation which is retained and over here you could also or another way to put it is you know by looking at this chart over here so with each for the first principal component you will have maximum variation which is getting captured from second you will capture a little less in the third principal component you will have even less and after a point you now you will stop reducing so this is very similar to the the elbow chart that we saw for knn right at this point we say okay it doesn't help any more after this point we are not capturing enough variation in our data so we can in this case we can select principal components four number of principal components or we can just keep top 3 components over here